Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. In this video, we are going to talk about one amazing feature that recently added in Playwright. So you just need to update your Playwright to 1.210. That is the latest Pomod XML file that you have to update the version here. And I'm going to talk about, for example, let's see, this is a web table. This is called where a number of rows are available and this is called a web table. So what exactly I want the use case is that let's say I want to go to Ashton Cox and then I want to select the checkbox for this guy or maybe let's see position of this guy, the office, age and the salary I want to capture for a specific row. And this web table is dynamic in nature because you never know the Ashton Cox is coming on first position, second position or the last position. Right. So how to do that? So in normal XPath or normal Selenium, what exactly we used to do that? We have to create the XPath access like preceding sibling, following sibling concept, parent child concept that we have to use that and we have to create our own a custom XPath with the help of XPath access we have to use. But here they have introduced one amazing feature in Playwright with the help of colon scope. You can define the scope of the entire web table and then you can capture the specific row on the basis of some specific unique element and then you decide what exactly you want to do that. And the syntax is very, very simple. So what do you have to do? For example, let's see, this is the page that I have. So I'm going to show you two examples. One is with this, and I'm going to show you one angular table also here. You can see this is again a quite complex table. And when you refresh this page, the page uh, will be loaded with this. And let's say I want to select the James Butt checkbox and what is the country name of this James Butt? Okay, something like this that I want to do that. So how will you do this? And another example that what if I want to capture the entire web table and I want to print it on the console, the complete scrap, I want to do that just like we do like web scrapping of the web table. I want to print everything on the console. Then how we'll do this. So in this case, um, let's see. So it's pretty simple. What exactly first you do, you just try to inspect this particular web table. So let's go to inspect and here you can see just slightly scarred up. You can see this is a table id equal to example and you just need to calculate that how many rows are there that's it okay so see under this particular table you just need to find out how many rows are there so i just simply say okay fine this is my table and then i'll say this is table hash id and give me total number of rows so you can see there are 12 rows are there in this particular table perfect and you just need to create a playwright locator on the basis of uh, this particular css selector or expert that you have created so I'm going to write page dot locator and that's it. So you with this page dot locator, you have the complete number of rows available on this particular page and then you store inside the uh, locator. For example, let's see, this is my uh, row locator that I have created. Perfect. And from this row, what you exactly you can do, you can define one more method locator and the second method I'm going to use it. This is the overloaded method. You have to pass the selector. And then it's saying the locator options also you can pass that. So see this, the selector you have to pass, I'm going to looking for the scope selector. So you have to write colon a scope here, and then you have to give one option. How will you give an option? You have to pass, create the object of a locator dot a locator options that you have to use it. And then after that, there is one method they have introduced set has method. And then I'm going to use that second method set has text method and then which text in this particular row you are looking for. So see, I'm applying on this row, which is representing this particular table and number of rows here. And then I'm saying you give me the scope of this particular text. Text means that which text I'm looking for Ashton Cox. So see this Ashton Cox that I'm looking for. And then from this particular Ashton Cox, what exactly you want? After that, I just want to again create one more locator and then now the control is available on this particular row entire row including this checkbox now i just want to click on the checkbox after that what simply you do that yeah this is a td and then there is a class is available select checkbox so you just need to create when you reach over here from the uh, till ashton cox and you just need to create one simple dot class name and then do what a dot click over here that's it see i'll show you <clears throat> so row dot this which has a text ashton cox and then go to this particular locator and then do what and then do a dot click that's it 
one single line of a statement that you have to write. So I'll repeat one more time. I'm capturing the total number of rows from this particular table. And then row dot locator, I'm looking for a scope. A scope of what? We need some reference, right? So I'm saying that I'm going to locate some options which has text Ashton Cox. It means in this particular row, you find out Ashton Cox and that particular table. And then it must have one select checkbox as a CSS. You can see, uh, you can see create one dot class name or CSS selector that I have created. And then you do a dot click. So this is representing this particular checkbox. So what exactly I have done, I have filtered out on the basis of this particular CSS. So first I'm going to take out the entire row from this table. Then I've reached to this particular row. And then from this row, I'm just going to select the checkbox. So let's see, this is working or not. So run as Java application, only one line statement and then everything will be done. You don't need to write any complex XPath access for loop, nothing. See, and you can see that Ashton Cox got selected here. That's so amazing. Right now, other than that, what if I want to print the complete layout of this particular table? So what exactly you can do again from this particular row? Now this row is representing the entire table row, all the rows, and I want to print each and every text of the row. How will you do this? So simple again, once again, I'm going to write a row dot a locator. What type of locator? The colon scope type of locator that I'm going to use. And I'm going to not going to use any options here. That's it. It means for this particular row, give me the entire scope, right? And from this entire scope means this entire web elements will be returned. And then from all those web elements, what exactly you want? I want all inner text. And then after that, you can just store inside the list of a string or you can directly write one for each and then you can supply it to the Lambda and then you write system.orotprintln and print the value of E. So let's see what is happening here. And when I'm going to run this program, and see the on the console and see this is my web table and you try to see everything on the console exactly same <laughs> layout is getting printed in the exactly same rows and columns you can see the first uh, row is column name and then all the values this id and then accountant and everything is getting printed on the console ashton cox is the third row third row is getting printed on the console in fact the last row is that this is also the column name name, position, office, age, salary. Everything is getting printed on the console here. Absolutely working fine. So you can print any table. You can collect all these values in a specific array list or hash map or whatever you want to capture that. You can do that. If you don't want to use this for each with Lambda, you can store inside the list of a string. You can write a for loop also. You can do that. So this is so amazing. Just one single line of uh, text. If you're getting confused, that's why I have created in multiple lines. But if you see, it's actually one line statement. That's, see, just only one dot click. And you can create a generic function for this where you just need to pass the value that which employee name or which username checkbox you want to select. And then simple do a dot click. So you can create a generic function, pass the value and then select it. Right now, let's take a better complex example. This one, this is slightly example. This is AngularJS uh, web table. And I'm looking for, okay, for let's see example for James Bird. Uh, Simona Moraska, the country name of this this person and then the select the checkbox also like this. How will you do this? Right. So in this case, again, exactly same thing you have to do. Let me just comment it out these three lines. Now, again, what is the next thing we have to do? We have to create a locator for the row. So my first target is that under that particular table, find out the row. So let's see, right click on it, go to inspect. And uh, here I can see a table and where the ID is available. So let's see, this is the ID and with this table, I'm going to use it. So I'll write, okay, fine. This is my table and this is the ID and then give me all the rows. Same thing. You can check it over here as well that this is my table hash row and then give me all the rows. So you can see 11 rows are coming here. This is what I want, right? So we have captured that now I'm going to store inside the locator. Let's see, this is my row. So now the control is available on the entire rows. Now from this row, let's say I want to select a specific value. For example, let's say I want to select Art, Wen Ray or James Bird. So let's say I want to select James Bird. So in that case, what exactly I'm going to do that row dot locator. And then I'm going to use that colon uh, scope, put a comma and then new uh, new locator right dot locator options you have to use and dot 
there is one method that is called set his text method it means in this entire row there is one text that is james but is there and then now when you reach at james but it means it is pointing to this entire row the first row and from the first row what exactly you want from the first row i want to select the checkbox so here you can see the div role equal to checkbox also you can use that or you can use this uh, p dot checkbox also you can use this see i can use this particular class i can create the checkbox uh, uh, create the locator for this checkbox on the basis of this class so i can quickly say okay fine that dot this is the locator and then the locator dot this and then do a dot click so i'll try dot click over here and that's it let's see this is working or not so it should select the checkbox for james but uh, once a page is loaded you can see the james but got selected don't so nice now exactly same thing i want to do the entire the web table i want to print it on the console so how will you do this so in this case again same thing you have to do that so i'll simply say row dot a locator and the scope that i'm going to refine this entire scope no options i don't want to define any options over here it means whatever the row scope is there you capture the all inner text right because it's, see i'm applying the row dot locator scope so under this particular row whatever the scope is there it means the scope of this row capture all the web element text and then simple use a for each loop pass it to the system dot our admin allen with the help of lambda and then print the value of e so let's see it is actually printing the entire row on the page i mean on the console or not all the rows text each and row column value with the proper format proper web table format it will be printed on the console so let's see on the console once the page is fully loaded then only it will perform the action so james but got selected and here you can see this is so awesome you can see all the column values are coming and then all the rows are actually coming over here you can see james bird joseph art and everything simona moraska or something like this it's coming over here this is so amazing right so you can just scrap the data print it on the console the entire table no need to write any complex loops nothing no need to write any complex xpath also siblings and everything just forget about those things up to reach up to your row and then define the scope on the basis of has text and the locator and that's it and then you can just pass you can create one generic function pass any data any uh, username or employee name and then it will select the checkbox for that particular user that's it so with this thing you can just handle all the complex web tables within one or two lines that's it that's an amazing feature provided by play right in the form of colon scope locator remember this thing so that's all for this particular video guys i hope you are liking this play right java series please share with others with your friends and colleagues who are looking for play right let me know if you have any issues i'll see you in the next video till then take care and